Hello and welcome back to CTR Part 16. And in this episode, we'll be finishing off uh, World 2 for the relics, and probably doing most of World 3. You got relics, poppers, pyramid. You got to go get this relic. Do you think Koku Bandicoot would actually play Magic the Gathering? Well, she would probably find Cockatrice similar to how we did. She is on her computer all the time. Uh, I forget. Did, uh, no, I got introduced to Cockatrice by, uh, by Corb, that's right. See, everyone's invited. I mean, we've already established that. Well, rather that Crash Remastered establishes that Coco has a has a pal who she talks to pretty regularly, to whom she sends pictures while standing idly waiting for the, waiting for the player to return the controller. Ah. Uh, uh, speaking of uh, Insane Trilogy, BSC is doing their uh, their Insane Trilogy uh, run through of uh, uh, Warped at the moment. Nice. And Ted's not around. I don't understand why Ted's not around. I feel like once you once you get to three, it's mostly the game. The trilogy has mostly run the gamut on like wowing the player with how good it looks. I think because a lot of the assets, appear, especially the crash asset, the, the, cra the crash asset is especially going to feel kind of well familiar. Let's say I was, I was about to say tired. I think familiar is. Or close to what I mean. Can I get the box? Yes. There we go. Yes, the box yeah. has accepted. But the thing, the thing about that cloud is that they skipped over Crash 2. Oh god, you know what I you know what I figure you're gonna skip over? Are those boxes on the left? Yeah, I'm I'm skipping those. Fuck that path. They really I'm not skilled enough at I'm not skilled enough at that path in order to go through it uh, if efficiently, so I just skip it. Bad box placement. It's not technically bad box placement if you're good if you're good on that path, but I'm not. So. It, it, God, it, this 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 level has set, has had some of the most precarious box placements I've seen yet. They're getting harder. Lots of ones that are that are offside or and or out of bounds. Mind you, the relics aren't actually getting all that much harder. I mean, the hardest relic race I want to say is actually the one for. Uh, for uh, Cortex Castle. Yeah, about that. <clears throat> that sounds like Great. that actually you sounds kind of familiar. Coming. I hope maybe I recognize what would cause that. But you know what I think? What I think increases difficulty of the relic races is that, well, in an ordinary race, if you fall off the track, you can mitigate that by hitting your opponents and slowing them down about as much as falling off the track slows you down. But when you're up against a timer and you can't attack the timer in the same way, then you just have to avoid the hazards as much as you can, and the more hazardous the level, the lower your time. Right. Makes you be more careful. Yay, nice boost. Nice boost. But I missed both boxes. Great nice boost. Nice shoes. So, I'm, a, I'm attempting to, fa uh, to fabricate some bullshit for us to discuss um, <laughs> while uh, whilst we're going through we get more repeats because you know I like Blizzard Bluff sure but it's not actually all that it's not all that difficult of a time trial I'm still gonna get, get close here as far as I can recall mostly because again my routes are, are not anywhere near uh, are not anywhere near the best. We could have gotten that too on the outside. That is what you could do. Go we'll get that tree. You left it. Or the one. It will be done. I don't know say what. Three. Me. Two. Who? <laughs> Being hypnotized by boxes. Persuaded to take paths. Ah, <laughs> uh, not me. I've I've actually been. I've been slowly building up, uh, building up resistance to hypnosis. <laughs> I mean, that's it sounds absolutely batshit insane when I put it like that, but it's kind of what I've been doing recently. Um, I'm not, I do not personally believe that hip, that, hypno, that uh, hypnosis is something that is a legitimate art form. 
but as it does help people from time to time, I have to concede that there are people that get that get help from hypnosis and good on them for it. But I will almost always never be a person to get assistance from hypnosis because I learned pretty early on that uh, one that one of the uh, most important facets of hypnosis is that if you do not want to be hypnotized, no one can force you to be hypnotized. Precisely, you have to you have to be open to you have to be consciously open to suggestion because if you're consciously close to suggestion, then su then suggestion will have no effect on you. Right. You'll be resisted, and then the government will have to fashion a nice. You know, totally not a trap sweepstakes Great. prize. You are the winner. Congratulations. Would you like to wear your trophy now? It fits very snugly over your head. Oh, don't mind the antenna. Why is it in a jacket? Oh, uh, we wanted you to feel snug. I mean, after all, you're the winner. We wanted you to feel good. Yeah. Do, do your arms feel nice and tightly wrapped behind your back, sir? I hope you're comfortable. Oh, we can loosen it a little bit. Except they don't, they actually tighten it. And that's what happens to every publisher's clearinghouse sweepstakes winner. You heard it here first. <laughs> uh, do you actually know anyone that's actually won the publisher's clearinghouse? I know about as many people who have won publisher's clearing clearinghouse as I've heard people, who, as I've known people who have won the Powerball. Which is to say, uh, none. Uh, you don't want to win. <laughs> this is Dragon Mines again. <laughs> Fuck this level. Fuck this level. This level sucks. Harmonica. So what? Uh, so what magic deck do you think Coco would actually run? That is, that is a good question. Elves. Really, elves. She would, she would, Coco Bandicoot would run elves. Mono green elves. I personally, I personally think that uh, she'd actually run as a storm. So blue and red? Yep, blue red, blue red storm. Interesting. I mean, storm actually, uh, storm actually is a, a, a very complicated deck to run, but it's very rewarding when when you get all of the pieces together and and your deck uh, works as it's supposed to. Mind you, it's not it's not actually as powerful as artifact storm in my personal opinion, but artifact storm is kind of broken, so we don't really. We don't really want to shout its praises around. Yeah, I'm trying to... Now Now you got me thinking a comparison between what would Coco run and what would Crash run. I think Crash would run a oh, much, Tra a much uh, denser Crash creature would run, loadout. Uh, would run Red Deck wins, like, no questions. Wait, Red red what? <laughs> red Deck wins. Red Deck, so Mono Red. Yeah, Mono, uh, mono Red Aggro. <laughs> I, yeah, I was about to say green again, but now I see a, perhaps a flaw in my... Imaginative style. Green requires some amount of strategy and combo pieces. Crash is incapable of understanding what pieces are. Right. So he would be content with seven drop six six with really cool flavor text. He would smile at it while sticking his tongue out like a like a loon. Uh, Red Deck Wins doesn't have any of those, sadly. It's got the trained org. Uh think so. Specifically, Red Deck Wins is mostly about Monetary Swift Spear, like Monastery Swift Spear, and uh, Goblin Guide. And I'm sure lots of weenies. Yeah, lots of weenies. Weenie wins. Weenie roast. No, not <laughs> not, not weenie wins, um, uh, because weenie wins right now is blue white. Uh, uh, yeah, the judge is familiar, I'm sure. Um, not this, not judges familiar, but it's tribal Jace. But Jace is boring. <laughs> all he, Jace is boring. All he does Jace is draw, is all he does is draw cards and insist that he's better than you. <laughs> well, he is better than you, but that's not the fucking point. <laughs> uh, but seriously, Jace, uh, Jace has for a long time been the worst, uh, the worst of the gay watch players. I still say that Gideon is the best, but that's mostly because Gideon spent a long time working with the Aboros Guild, and you know, I am a Boros fanboy. Is Gideon the one that says that, like, if you add one loyalty to him, you create, like, three 1-1 one -one humans? 
Um, I think one of Gideon's uh, cards says that. Although, to be perfectly honest, that honestly sounds more like a Johnny thing. Or maybe an Else Pass. Elspeth, yeah, yeah, I think I think you hit the nail on the head, Elspeth. You see what doing repeats of levels that maybe resemble the bear down level from Crash Doo Doo to us. There's nothing new to commentate on except boxes and boxes. All kinds of toxins. No, and there's not even all that many toxins. I mean, sure, you have the uh, frozen lake that's a uh, constant an issue, but that was an issue in the last part that we did uh, that we didn't actually uh, bring up. So, no, there's really not much to, uh, more that we can uh, really di dissect about this level. Well, uh, yes, it's a fun fucking track. It really is. But, my God, why are we... Uh, I... Because it's necessary. I want to say, <laughs> was it necessary to actually show to show the Relic Track? Yes. And to be perfectly honest, it was not necessary, but I wanted to do it any goddamn well, way. It, I am a terrible look, person. Here's exposition. Is this... This course actually has a really relaxed sapphire time. You have you have three minutes. You have three fucking yeah. minutes to finish the race, and you got the relic. Yeah, and to be perfectly honest, you can almost do that without picking up boxes. I want to say that if you're if you're really skilled at it, you can get each lap in just over a minute. So, yeah, the, the sapphire time is really easy. You know, uh, what, you know what a really uh, relaxed. Really you know what a really relaxed Sapphire time does. It makes a. It makes a really tedious platinum time. I'm sure. Um, I'm not sure. I want to say the platinum time is 155. I'm not. I really don't know. Well, we're about to find out in a second how close you were. No. Well, well we're not gonna find out what the platinum time is again. I'm not beat oxide yet, so we don't get to see the platinum. Time, oh so. right, because you don't get to see the platinum time even even though you get the gold and what else is there to do but get better than gold. Oh. All right, so two thirty. You beat the gold time by twenty six seconds. That is intimidating. Yep. I'm scared. <laughs> Well, again, Polar Pass is one of my favorite fucking levels. It's just a, it's such a pleasant level, too. Except it is a very pleasant level. See, it, it even freezes the, the monster polar bear, so you feel safe. Yeah. Great. And in the next All right, part, and in the next part, we will do Tiny Arena, which will close out the end of World 3, and then we'll transition to World 4. Once we have all the World 4 relics, we will end up doing Sly Coliseum, I believe. Get sliding.